This episode is sponsored by Google Play with the help of Crash Bandicoot on the run. From the director of the Justice League, trailer comes the film that rose from the ashes to redeem that burnt orange tire fire, transforming it from a movie that was two hours long and terrible to a movie that's four hours long and mediocre. Proving once and for all, if you want to look great by comparison, just stand next to Joss Whedon. The Snyder Cut, for real this time. Prepare for a film that wouldn't exist without a powerful league uniting behind it, joining the internet's most devoted fans of targeted harassment, creatively bankrupt WB execs, a parent company who would happily piss on the ashes of the last movie theater to sell more broadband, the writer who sharded out Rise of Skywalker, and a director who was already self-indulgent before he formatted a film for IMAX knowing it would be released on a streaming service. I think you just liked how the bars added more darkness to every scene, right? That's free darkness right there, baby. Black suit up for an entirely different take on the theatrical release, except for its plot, setting, main characters, and themes, where, if you recall, a gray CGI monster covered in spikes wants to destroy the world, who's out to impress his gray CGI monster boss. But this time, follow in excruciating detail as this gray CGI monster reports his progress to his gray CGI monster boss's gray CGI monster executive assistant. Decide, decide, I call to thee. I have found one of the three. The one that woke and called. Let me make a plea to him that I may come home after I take With the combined form. power of the two mother boxes, I've been able to finish. I bring news before my deep dark side came. No to protectors the here. No lanterns. The anti life equation is carved into the surface of this very world. Meanwhile, Batman is still assembling a team of heroes to protect the Earth, where they will work together to bring back Superman and quickly prove that there's no point to a Justice League once you brought back Superman. <laughs> Honestly, they have nothing to do besides stand in a neat little line together. Good job, team. Okay, Soups, take it from here. With two and a half Casablanca's worth of runtime to fill, everyone's getting more character depth. Like Aquaman, who doesn't want to live under the sea, but doesn't want to be where the people are either, because the surface world is full of horny Bjorks. The Flash, who's ditched the awkward jokes. Dostoevsky! Or awkwardly touching his wiener next to Iris West. Batman, who has so little to offer the team, they give him and Alfred a little airplane to work on as a treat. Best minds of Wayne Aerospace couldn't make it fly. Oh, Christ. And Cyborg, where the change from Joss Whedon to Zack Snyder is most apparent. Ooh, yeah. The world. Watch Ray Fisher shine as the emotional heart of the story and the heir to Batman's mantle of depression, who's lost his body, lost his parents, and might be the only college football star to risk losing his place on the team for academic violations. That doesn't mean he can hack into our system to change his friend's grades. You know this dude plays for Gotham U and they just beat a Big Ten program like Wisconsin? Not only does he get a pass for hacking grades, there's a 90% chance Bruce Wayne just bought him an Escalade. Prepare your anus for Snyder's trademark brand of muscular visual filmmaking, packed to the brim with hunks allergic to their own shirts. Here. Boo! Boo that woman! Where every action scene got immeasurably better thanks to new additions like Amazon horse violence. <laughs> Atlantean bloodbending. The gods of Olympus reminding Darkseid who's the daddy. Extreme sesame seed close-ups. And heroes who take time to inspire the next generation before their victims' brains have even finished dripping down the walls. Can I be like you someday? 
You can be anything you want to be. But man, at the risk of beating a dead Superman, this guy loves his slow motion. I mean, come on. The Flash's super speed gets the same treatment as Lois Lane putting down a cup of coffee. Is her drink going back in time, or is she just extra sad about her husband? So gather round for the epic culmination of a mass movement built around the sincere belief that it wasn't enough for Zack Snyder to do whatever he wanted for two box office disappointments. It's not enough that grim superhero storytelling is basically its own genre now. No, this film had to exist in its purest form. Or rather, this film always existed in its purest form, and the $70 million Warner spent on it was for, uh, snacks or something. But now that it's finally here, Snyder's biggest fans can finally lay down their arms and be satisfied that their hero's journey got a proper ending. Aw, oh, come on! So wait as you pass by scenes that were clearly setting up multiple sequels, teasing fans with the ultimate fantasy of watching Darkseid and Superman take the rest of Earth to Pound Town, ensuring that every tweet, article, or public statement about Warner Brothers will get swarmed with a hashtag Restore the Snyderverse, something that will never, ever happen. Until DC's annual firing of the executives and the next ones make it happen. Bullying remains undefeated, y'all. Wait, it's still not over? That was a natural place to stop. <sighs> Welcome entirely new additions like Martian Manhunter, whose appearance raises questions like, where the f*** has Martian Manhunter been? And how often has he hit the town disguised as Diane Lane? And Jared Leto's Joker finally sharing a scene with Ben Affleck's Batman. I mean, they clearly didn't film together, but you can imagine what it would be like if they finally shared a scene. Who's gonna give you a reach around? It would suck. Okay, this thing is way too long, and I've been holding in pee since part four. Can you just roll every time they say mother box? I'll be right back. Mother boxes. 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 Ah, that's better. All right, time for starring. Daddy wore bats. I'm rich. Wonder Woman, restorer of ancient art and antiquities. <laughs> Never mind. It's not a phase, Mom. This is who I am now. Every heist team needs an IT guy. Debbie Drowner. I want to be left alone. This is a bad idea. His father's dead because of us. <laughs> Quipsilver. Mr. T. Put the water in first so we don't scald the tea. No, that's probably enough tea. And then leave it to mash. Big City Elegy. <laughs> Put the spikes back on! Put the spikes back on! Is this movie rushing or dragging? It's dragging. Maybe this guy should stop working with robots. The boar is lava. I'm made of rocks, as you can see. I don't let that intimidate you. Martha Manhunter. The Living Joke. Mira's accent? The firstborn of beloved Queen Atlanta. You are the firstborn son of Queen Atlanta. And your mama's box is so smelly, Steppenwolf can track it halfway across the globe. You have been near a mother box. The scent is on you. Oh! Justice League, bigger, longer, and uncut. Working on an ID sketch? <laughs> Where did they find that sketch artist? The leprechaun guy? This episode is sponsored by Google Play. Download Crash Bandicoot on the run and discover more on Google Play now. Hey there, fellow travelers. I'm trying my best, Mom. I never actually said this sentence. Screen Junkies now has a synthetic approximation of my voice made from previous recordings. 